Now we're inside the archives that hold the Francis Schaeffer collection and I'm with Dr. Youngmark. First off, I wanted to show all of you this stack of papers. Now, Dr. Youngmark, what is this stack? This is what we call a finding aid. And this pile represents a line by a line inventory of the materials in the collection. And this is an early draft. Oh, that's impressive. You've undertaken the, the process of going through and um, you know, cataloging everything, and so this is the result of that catalog, correct? Yeah. We provided an inventory first, and this essentially was the inventory of materials. And we're reshaping it into what's called the finding aid, which will be the formal document to do the hand search uh, mm -hmm. prior to a digitized form. What's the size of the collection? Well, as you can see, the archive boxes behind us, the size of them, and we have 101 boxes mm -hmm. that hold that material. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's the uh, average number of folders or items that's going to be in, in a single box? Well, I don't think I have a, an average because it varies on what materials we have in any particular box. Mm -hmm. We could have 40 files, file folders in a single box if they have maybe 50 items of correspondence, for example. Mm -hmm. So it varies on what material we put in the boxes. Okay. So tell me about uh, the types of uh, then materials that you find in, in the boxes. Uh, right, good. We, of the 101 boxes, uh, roughly 45, 50 of them contain audio tapes and film and um, and books. Okay. We were given about uh, 250 books from his library. Uh, these were selected because he had a special connection to them. He annotated in them in some way, and uh, those were those were sent to us. And there's about 250 of those. Okay. We have about uh, 600 audio tapes, the reel-to-reel, -reel, uh, quarter-inch tapes, and uh, those are marked. What, two, uh, uh, two sided or three sided, you know, they could get a number of lectures on there. So we don't know how many lectures are actually on each reel. Uh, those, that will be determined once we start the uh, digitization process. Are the, are the, the tapes, the, the reel to reel, are they labeled? Do we know? Most of them are. Most of them are labeled. Yeah. Uh, they may be marked uh, as Libri tapes, lectures. They may be say a particular night's lecture where they just turn on the uh, recorder while he was uh, speaking to the group and they might just have a date on mm -hmm. and uh, again we don't know how much uh, is on each reel. And also uh, the the movie footage, the, the video, can you talk about that for a second? Yeah, there's about uh, 200 segments of film and that translates into maybe several full reel portions and then um, outtakes as small as a quarter inch diameter. Mm -hmm. There's a full range of sizes. How, how did you know, have you seen some of them or is it labeled such? Um, the latter, yeah, we have not viewed them. We don't have the equipment to do that at this point here. Um, but most of them are labeled and uh, they're noted as outtakes to the film either, you know, whatever happened to the human race or wow. so forth. I think the thing that we're most excited about, having come here today and actually seen with our own eyes that uh, you actually have some papers. Yes, that we do. <laughs> the rumors are The true. rumors are true. True, yes. Uh, and we were um, just kind of blown away by how much there is. Yes. Uh, and at the same time, that, that there's uh, a lot of detail. It seems that Schaefer uh, kept everything. Yes. Uh, you know, you look, I don't know if you got to see, but Sometimes it might even be a program that he was at an opera or something. He made notes on it. <laughs> That's there. <laughs> wow. Well, and and, and uh, one of the things that uh, was mentioned to us is that sometimes there's even been duplicates. Yes, that's what, as you know, as talking with uh, Dr. Youngmark, that's one of the things they have to do right now is, you know, after the data was just put in, now we realize, oh, we've got duplicates of this and duplicates of that. There are some things in the, in the collection that need to be uh, removed. 
uh, they really belong to the family. Uh, they got here like we have his yearbook, his high school yearbook. Um, have his grades uh, when he was in uh, college, and uh, one of the <laughs> one of the statements on it is written: "He's a good lad." <laughs> because if they sent him actually in those days, they sent they sent the grades home to the parents, oh, yeah. even in college, and so it says, "You know, he's a good lad." <laughs> Imagine that. There's uh, some real accountability about yeah, that. Yeah. I think we need to go back to some of that. <laughs> now. Um, we were also talking earlier, and you mentioned that uh, that a lot of uh, correspondence uh, that you uh, have in the in the collection is personal correspondence. Can you talk about that some more? Sure. Um, there are about over thirty-five thousand pieces of correspondence, and that primarily is correspondence between Schaefer and perhaps prospective students to Liberty, visitors to Liberty, friends of Liberty. Um, in fact, it's just, to me, quite surprising that we have, or Schaefer wrote as much as he did. It is rather remarkable. Yeah, and we have to wonder, where did he get time to sit down yeah. and write when he wasn't writing a book, away on a, a speaking campaign, uh, filming a movie, uh, talking to people in his own living room at the Bray. It's just amazing. It you talk also about um, Children for Christ. Uh, you mentioned there's not a lot, but there's some pieces. Yeah. There is um, advertisements for Children for Christ. There are publications that Schaefer himself wrote for Children for Christ. Um, there's correspondence with uh, other missionaries here in the states, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there is a, a, f a little and, bit of that. Well, I, th I thought it was uh, really interesting, uh, also that uh, you know that we're starting to get a sense of what's really there. Um, mm -hmm. We're looking at it, and you're, you're starting to understand that there's a certain percentage of these type of works, a certain percentage of I'd say books or films or you know what sort of media so the the breakdown is starting to happen right? yes how far along are we in the process well we we have everything as you know is inventoried but that's pretty broad uh, the good thing is it makes it all searchable now uh, they're happy to go through and they're looking at doing the uh, deleting duplicates uh, getting better designate. In other words, you know, some of the titling of the particular documents needs to be uh, polished a little bit. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing. That's what Dr. Youngmark is doing. We have another, uh, we have some other folks, of course, who are actually doing the digitization. That's going to be our slowest project. We have wonderful uh, equipment. We have first-rate equipment. We actually uh, have got a, uh, a uh, grant, I think, to purchase some of the equipment from uh, Canon. So it, it's top the line, but it's time consuming, very time intensive. <laughs> You're feeding all these, these individual pieces uh, in. Uh, some of it goes obviously faster than others. Another thing that they have an issue with is bleed through, mm. because like when you use onion skin yeah. and there's something on the back. So it takes going through a couple of steps so you get a good image, but without getting the bleed through on the back side. Some of it is quite straightforward. So th that's what they're doing now. As I mentioned, we've digitized the Bible. Uh, and I don't know if you got a chance to see that or not, the digitization of that. Haven't yet. Okay. Uh, well, I have a copy that we can look at uh, maybe tomorrow morning or something. Uh, the The... Probably the most difficult for us to do is going to be the tapes. Now these are the tapes that were on Sunday, excuse me, Saturday or Friday evening. I've heard Friday, then I hear Saturday. But that's where Schaefer would simply walk in to the brewery, or he would walk into the down in the chapel. He's everybody gathered on Friday night and say, what are we going to talk about? And those discussions just went on. Well, they were never, they weren't, um, they weren't taped early on. And somebody actually bought a tape recorder for Schaefer. He said, no, he's not going to tape them. 
this is the story that I get and I have no reason to believe it's not true. And he said, uh, after they had some conversation one night, and the people involved went to Edith and said, this was marvelous. We, we've got to get this on tape. So I understand what they did was they started the tape recorder for the next Friday night or Saturday night, and they hid the microphones in flower pots. And so that's how this taping started. And nobody says, you know, March 25th, 1972. Uh, no, these things just run on and on and on. So <laughs> once, they, once they're digitized, you're going to have to go back and kind of separate these things out, you know, and get them posted and say, we will never know what the dates are as far as I know, mm -hmm. but to segment them, say, oh, this is a, this is a, this is another one, this is another one. That will have to probably be outsourced. Uh, they, and they're working on that right now because we're not sure of the quality of the, the tape, the videotape, uh, excuse me, the, the audio tape. So we certainly don't want to listen to it, you know, and, and run the risk of breaking it. So the first time it's going to be worked on is when we start the digitization process. Mm -hmm. Now I am told that uh, there seems to be, these people in the industry tell me that I think around 1985 they actually changed the way they did the tape, they, they manufactured it, and it wasn't as good as what was pre-85. Mm -hmm. So the, it may very well be that you know the tape's in good shape and we'll be able to digitize it and not have any things break, but we don't know. That's, that's probably the most expensive uh, the thing that we have to do, but we're right now working on digitization, digitizing, you know, the correspondence and all of that. We got to do with the books that we have. Uh, you know, we are, our contract commits us to uh, digitize everything. What obstacles uh, do you have in your path that are uh, in completing your project or, or that are slowing it down? Well, that's a good question. Uh, one basic one is just simply the funds to pay for the labor to do the uh, copying and so forth, the digitizing, etc. Um, we were able to get some funds through a, um, a grant for the some equipment, but uh, the grant didn't relate to labor. Mm. So one of the things is we need to raise some more money to, to pay for those efforts. Um, and depending on whether or not we have the in-house capability to convert the 16 millimeter film to uh, you know, discs remains to be seen. And uh, if we have to outsource that, there will be need for additional funds. What are the needs uh, that, you, that you have uh, as far as uh, for contributions? or uh, this Contribution would always be appreciated, as I said, particularly with the outsourcing of the tapes. Whoever does that has really got to know what they're doing. And there are a good number of them. Now, I think, I, I think someone's calculated what that might cost. I mean, we're not talking about millions of dollars, but uh, to private institutions. I mean, we're committed to do it. But if we have, if, if we get money in by contributions, then that just means we can do it much quicker. That's really what, I mean, we are committed to, have it, to having it all done, and the money will be there to do it. But if we had contributions, why, it would just drive that process quicker. But thanks for asking. Yes. Yeah. Now, the, the seminary put up quite a bit of, um, funds to uh, to take on this this uh, project to take on this this job of, uh, of uh, custodianship uh, for the Francis Schaeffer Foundation um, why did they do that well I would think that there's a recognition of the importance of Francis Schaeffer and he has a contribution to make and still I mean still has a contribution to make and many of our contemporaries have lost sight of Schaefer. The younger generation in large part don't know who he is. When I ask students mm -hmm. about Schaefer, a small remnant know him, mm -hmm. have heard about him, and we uh, need to let them know 
what he's done and how they can learn so much from him. So th this seminary is putting their, their money where their mouth is when they say they want to pass on the ideas uh, and the, the legacy of Schaefer to the next generation. I think that is unequivocally clear. You know, so what impact uh, has uh, the collection had on the seminary? Well, it may, it may be too early for us to say. Uh, we are now uh, having people contact me and saying I would like to come and study. I serve as the gatekeeper according to the contract. The, the, uh, the, 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 the papers, the collection, was in a sense kind of given through the center, but it is the seminary that holds them. And then I am the director, the custodian of the papers of which we are in custody of, <laughs> so that I determine whether or not the individual who is requesting to whether or not we think that, yeah, this is a good idea or it's not a, you know, somebody just wants to come and fiddle with them. We're not really interested. We're looking for scholars who want to come and, um, and look at it. So we're getting people, I've got a lady from Cambridge, we have a young man coming from out in the Midwest uh, that's coming to look at him. I, he's got four days, I think, to do research on it. So the thing it will do for the seminary, of course, apart from the fact of other people coming here, is it does provide the students, uh, you know, the serious students, like PhD students, a great opportunity. So we have some now moving in that direction. Yeah, there's just a lot of benefits, uh, but probably not so much the seminary in terms of, you know, what's going to put us on the map or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, we are custodians for the whole evangelical world as far as we're concerned. Um, this is nothing for, just for the Southeastern. I know some people were a little concerned when we as Baptists got it, mm -hmm. uh, but we are we just consider ourselves as acting sort of in a fiduciary capacity for everybody else. And so it's open for people who want to come here. Yeah. And, and we hope they do. I don't, we don't care who they are. Well, and that was uh, something I was going to ask you about. I mean, I, I imagine you all um, actually anticipated that this would come up, that, uh, you know, why didn't the uh, PCA Historical Center, for one, uh, get this information, or uh, why isn't this in the hands of Presbyterians, you know, and yet I, I think that uh, you kind of answered that, if there's other things that you would like to say about that, I mean. Well, yes, I, I have to say, well, I won't go into the details, but I have to say that when I met with the foundation, that would have been, at that time it was Udo and Deborah, and I remember them saying to me, they want to talk about the papers. I didn't know what they were talking about. I did not know. 26, what, 25, 26 years that Schaefer had been dead. <laughs> I mean, I'm a country bumpkin. I didn't know. Pretty naive. Well, we started talking, and I realized, you're talking about Schaefer's papers. Yeah. And, I, you know, and I'm thinking, uh, why would you want to give them to the Baptists? So it needs to be very clear. I did nothing to woo them I did nothing to try to sweeten the pot. I did nothing to get the papers because I didn't even know the papers existed. So I was as shocked when they mentioned this, shocked and totally overwhelmed, because Schaefer had played a large part in shaping my, my Christian life. So I was overwhelmed by the fact that they were going to give them him. Deborah spoke to that issue, and I would leave them why they chose. Um, this place. I'm delighted that they did, uh, but I, the, the thing that we want to make so clear is uh, we, we just want to hold them in trust for the entire evangelical world to benefit from it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, that's, uh, that's interesting. I, I, I found a quote from Debbie. Uh, she was an article um, uh, from David Malone at Wheaton College. Yes. And he quotes Deborah as saying, my father was a very odd man. Okay, had it, had it been given to, uh, to a more logical place, it would have been inappropriate. So I, I think that shows you a little bit of something of her wit. Yes. You know, but uh, there's also something about Schaefer. Yes. 
it just, yeah, well, why? I, I, I'm so grateful. I, I, I think dearly of both, Ida, uh, both uh, Udo and uh, Deborah. They have become very good friends. And I'm grateful for that. Um, and I'm grateful that they um, thought that I was, in a sense, worthy to be given and the, these, the, 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 the oversight of these papers. And uh, I consider that one of the greatest honors of my, of my life. Mm -hmm. wow. Yes. And that's saying something. Well, I'm 67 <laughs> years old, and a lot of things have <laughs> transpired over the, over the years. I don't want to minimize what other people may have done, but I'm just saying, yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was enormous to me, absolutely enormous. Uh, emotional, uh, any way you want to think about it. So, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm deeply indebted to them. I, I love both Deborah and Udo. Uh, I can't say much more than that. Uh, I think that's um, something that needs to be discussed. I, I think, uh, uh, first off, the relationship that you have, have, have developed with them. But then I think also what you just said, that, that you're doing this for the evangelical yes. world. Um, have there been any uh, relationships that have or, that have formed, or, or uh, discussions that have formed with other universities, uh, as far as uh, especially those that hold collections of Schaefer, that uh, you know about cooperating on the matter. No, there there hasn't been at this point, and it may be that you know we've had a relatively short period of time, mm -hmm. and maybe. Uh, after the shock wears off or something, I don't know. <laughs> or, or that just the people begin to realize that Schaefer is an important figure. It, it, you see in some new books come out, you know, Colin Derry Age, we've talked about that before. Uh, Follis Bryan did his earlier than that. Uh, there there's, it seems to be a new interest in Schaefer. So as that um, continues, then there may be some dialogue that starts between some of us who hold different portions uh, of it. Of course, we have the, the lion's share, but uh, the, where there's cooperation, and of course, what we have is got some, some pretty strict re restrictions on it. But that's the way the contract was written, and you know, in terms of what we can do with it and everything. But excellent. Now, uh, where do you see? Um the future of all this going. Uh, what uh, benefit are, are we getting uh, for all this time and, uh, and labor? I mean, you guys uh, have literally, I, mean, I was talking to with the archivist, yes. and, uh, and uh, the people that are involved in the day-to-day -day work on this, they, they're doing some painstaking yes. things. Yes. That's a lot of work and a lot of time to contribute to this uh, you know, method and the things that need to be done. And, and you just described uh, a lot of the details that's involved in even just the scanning. Mm -hmm. And we were looking at, by the way, some of those onion skin papers, yes. and they just looked like they were going to fall apart right <laughs> in our hands. Um, they, were, they were so thin, and you could yes. see right through them, like, and he was calling them airplane, airplane paper. Uh -huh. I said, well, yes. you've heard of e-mail, yes. e e e you know, the e-paper. Well, this is yes. uh, airplane. airplane paper. Airplane paper, yes. <laughs> well, there are some of us, and I hope our tribe is increasing, who think that Schaefer spoke not only to the 20th century, but very much the 21st century. As a matter of fact, and maybe I'm overstating the case, I think that what Schaefer has said and done is almost timeless, because it's the way he approached everything. Um, and it's such a, an urgent message for us today, because of how evangelicalism is treating Christianity today almost as if it's a product to be sold. Uh, we're, we don't look much different than the circus barker. Uh, our churches don't look, many of them don't look much different from the mall. You know? and, and I'm thinking, I don't know what Schaefer would have said about all that. And so I'm not saying it can't be a both and, but that's the direction I'm seeing evangelicalism. Many churches with evangelicalism going. And there's, there's a, a, a need to return to some deep thinking about the implications if we live in a, in, a, in a space that's created by the infinite personal triune creator God. 
uh, there, there are some logical extensions to all of that. And we need to seriously think about that. Um, and I was, and I've been thinking about that. And that's why I think that uh, Schaefer is so important. I, I, the, uh, when I teach apologetics, and I'm often reminding our students that uh, what Schaefer says, in, in essence, he says, when you, when you see the person in front of you, you don't first see a sinner or a saint. You see a human being. That, to me, is colossal. That changes everything. The, the game changes at that point. See. I'm, I'm seeing a human being. That, that then will begin to, to dictate to me in a sense. How do I approach this? Is this just a number? Is this just somebody I'm trying to get converted? Of course, we, of course we want to get people converted, of course. But how do we see them? We got to see them first as a human being. And then that begins to shape my, my compassion for the individual. And when he or she rejects what I have to say, realizing, well, yes, you live in a fallen world, that's precisely what I would think you might want to say. That doesn't surprise me. I mean, we might say that to ourselves. Um, the, the other thing that Schaefer says, which I think is, is astounding, he says it in a couple of places, and that is that the first truth we let in is not the truth of some dogmatic statement from Scripture, but reality. And I think that is also called I lecture in a number of different places in uh, Europe and around the world. And the, one of the things I always make, students say, oh, why would you come here to talk about your religion, trying to make us religious? is no, I'm not. I'm here talking to you about ontology. I'm talking to you about the nature of reality. Reality is one way if God exists, and it's totally different if he does not exist. And um, I didn't come up with that on my own. <laughs> yeah. You know, Schaefer schooled me in thinking that way. Now he might want to take, might not want to take credit for it today. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I don't do it well. You know, I think about the well, what you just said about the concepts that are, are being put forth. Um, Schaefer, of course, he taught about that we were created in the image of God. Mm -hmm. Yet the problem um, was uh, is really almost that, that that was a forgotten tenet in our Christian doctrine. It's like it's there but it's not, there's no heavy emphasis and the way that shapes uh, especially against the backdrop of modern society or now postmodernism uh, has a huge impact um, and then likewise the, the fact that we're seeking something that does make sense in reality uh, it, it becomes all the more relevant. Yes because we get pushed into the corner and we just say, oh, you're just talking about religious things. No, I'm not. I'm talking about reality. And you have to live in it. <laughs> and I have to live in it. You tell me which view of reality makes more sense. Yes. And I was just in Pennsylvania debating an atheist. And you know, that's the point that I make. You know, this is about reality. Let's, you know, well, if God is there, it has religious implications. And no doubt about that. But that's a different story. I'm happy to talk to you about that too. But right now, we're focusing on this. That is, this is not a religious thing, per se, at the, at the start of the conversation. You've invested um, literally hours upon hours for over a year um, cataloging, inventorying, some tedious work. What do you personally hope comes from this? Fundamentally, I hope that because materials like this are available, researchers will come here and release the various sites that the materials will be and use them. Mm -hmm. I think um, Schaefer is a, a significant figure, and I know he influenced my life immensely, and I know that he has something to say to our generation. We are so happy to be here. We greatly appreciate the access that we have had. Just, well, wonderful. It's been a joy to uh, kind of see things firsthand, and also um, uh, they've looked up quite a bit of information for us. <laughs> so we have quite a bit to consider ourselves, uh, and, and a lot of work to to organize everything. But it's been a real blessing, and we, we really appreciate what you've done for us. I, you know, you give me uh, the opportunity to talk about something I like to talk about. So. Uh, the truth of the matter is, you you know, you probably uh, 
I'm the one should be thanking you right. <laughs> for giving me the opportunity to say these things, and you know because some of the things I may have said in a small in a smaller environment, but you know this will gives me an opportunity, particularly the opportunity to help people understand about as Baptists why did we get it? Well, I don't know why per se, but that we're not trying to you know just use this as a trump card and say look what we got. Uh, matter of fact, I'm very honest with you, I, I, I told all of our people, if you do that, I will not support you. You're not going to make a big issue. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got it and the Presbyterians didn't. That's not what Jesus would want. That is simply not the right spirit. And, and I have to say, very grateful that uh, the administration here agreed with me. And I have to thank Danny Aiken, the president, when I went to him and said, you know, Danny, you want to do this. He never thought once. He just said, absolutely, Bruce. That's a no-brainer. It's cost is, in, well, I, I don't mean, maybe I shouldn't say this, but it is an expense involved. And uh, everybody's been more than happy for that expense uh, to be made, to bring everything over here from Switzerland and then do what we're doing. But this because the institution believes this is really important. And, uh, you know, we at FrancisSchaeferStudies.org believe it's very important, yeah. too. And uh, we're con we'll continue to uh, check back with you and, and see what else happens.